Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am, of course, General Lotz. And today is yet another Friday live stream. Today, it's going to have to be somewhat short, unfortunately, and that's because I get to work on Saturday, which means I have limited time today, which sucks, but such is the nature of existence. Currently, I'm not joined by anybody. I'm kind of like really rushing everything today, alas. So everyone will join uh, when they can. Also, you gotta love how the date is wrong. It says it's still 2005. Yeah, it ain't 2005 anymore. And hello, Jason Armstrong. All right, then we're continuing the playthrough of the third Doom. You know what's rather interesting about Doom 3, though? Is that it's a sequentially numbered sequel, but it's a remake. This is sort of like one of the first of the remakes of classic games. And uh, when it comes to remaking classic games, it's really one of the best. Uh, it really stayed true to what Doom was, much more so than Doom 2016 in many instances. But the difference between this and a lot of the other, you know, uh, remakes is the fact that it was actually done by the original company. A lot of these remakes of classic games is done by somebody completely new, and they kind of miss out on uh, what made it good. And hello, Foxell. And the job's been good. Got to work on Saturday, though. Ugh, I'm already tired to begin with. Which it seems like this is a little too loud. Let's see. Did that? Yeah, it still sounds like it's at 20%. Doesn't sound like 20%, I can tell you that. Doom 3 is always kind of a loud game. Uh, but when it comes to Doom 3, I don't know why people hated it. I, did, I certainly didn't know that people hated it back in the day. I, I just never knew, and I gotta get rid of that mouse cursor because this is not a uh, PC game. I never knew that people disliked it. I thought everybody thought it was pretty good. Or at least I liked it. And hello, Hunter. Are there any Doom 64 mods for Doom 3? Not that I'm, not that I'm aware of. And uh, good evening, uh, Turok Fireseed. Uh, there's not as many Doom 3 mods uh, as there are Doom... Uh, classic wads. Uh, there are more Doom 3 mods than you'd think. There's actually going to be a... I'm actually going to play a Doom 3 wad... Oh, not wad. It's a pack file, but whatever. I'm actually going to do a Doom 3 mod uh, sometime later this year. I'm not sure when, though. Now, right now, for those who care about the objective, we're trying to find a transmission card so we can either A, send a message out, or B, not. Uh, I always... As mentioned in the previous episode, never actually send the transmission out. G really? Negative six, so that means he's got an arm off now. Uh, let's see. Here is... In a minute, if they continue with the... You know, that was something I was thinking of myself, uh, Jason Armstrong. Is if they had made a Doom 4 in this style, what would, it, what would it have looked like? And we got a teaser that was leaked that was going to be set on Earth, and many people called it Call of Doom, because it looked like Cobb Doobies. However, you know, if it maintained the gameplay like this, then I think it might have actually done pretty well. Uh, if it had gone full Call of Duty regenerative health, it probably would have failed, but I would have preferred this aesthetic to have continued. Doom 2016 is something I've kind of cooled on over the years since it released. The biggest problem with Doom 2016 is I think they're trying too hard, and they're not really understanding why Doom is good. I guess the big problem with Doom 2016 is simply the fact that they set out to make a Doom game. And I think we just got our first disc error with- No, we don't! I don't know why it was taking so long for that to load up. I love how, like, I try to load into the menu, it takes forever, and then I, act then I actually exit. But anyway, um, Doom 2016, they were trying to make a Doom game, and in so doing, they made a pretty good Doom game, but with Doom 3, they weren't trying to make Doom 3. They sort of just made it naturally. It's sort of like the problem with some of these 80s throwback films that have been released. Uh, you know, they're trying to make an 80s thing, they're not just trying to make a thing. Which is kind of an issue. Because when you're trying to make a thing, it doesn't evolve naturally. It's like, Commando was made at the right time with the right actors with the right director they weren't setting out to make a ridiculous action movie they were just trying to make a movie and that it was a ridiculous action movie just was that's what happened 
And, you know, Doom 2016 was was so popular, and I liked it so much, because I hadn't played Doom 3 or any of the classic games in a number of years by that point. And so it looked good, because I didn't have games like this in my uh, recent memory. And those maggots are creepy, but they do next to no damage. When I... When I first got Doom 3, the Xbox version, I also got the Prima uh, strategy guide. I don't think Prima even exists anymore, which it doesn't really need to, just because, well, you have game facts and all the rest. You even had that back then. But I wanted the strategy guide primarily because I wanted to get little story bits from it. Of which I think there were a couple. I accidentally got the PC strategy guide, which didn't really help all that much. Because, like, it listed some enemies that aren't in this game. Uh... In the Xbox version of Doom 3, you don't actually get the shield guys. Uh, they're absent. Uh, let's see. Would you ever want to do reviews in the Command & Conquer series? Uh, Command & Conquer I will do at some point. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be, unfortunately. Just because there's so many other games I want to talk about. Uh, what I would... The Command & Conquer game that I would be reviewing would actually be Command & Conquer Generals. That's the only Command & Conquer game I've ever actually played. And I used to play that all the time back in the day. Uh, I played a lot of that. Uh, mainly through Game Ranger. Game Ranger is a pretty good service, actually. I play a lot of uh, multiplayer games through that. Uh, and Command & Conquer Generals uh, is about the first and pretty much only Command & Conquer game I've ever played. I remember around 2012, uh, EA created, I think, like, Bioware Victory, and they were supposed to release Command & Conquer Generals 2. It was gonna be great, right? Well, that never happened. I think they were, I think they did release some sort of browser game that was complete crap, but don't quote me on that, because I do not remember if they did that or not. I really do like the imps in this game. I mean... At first, when I played the game, I was kind of disappointed it didn't just, like, use the original design. But over the years, I've come to really appreciate just how cool they look. Because they have, like, those fucking spider- Oh, he blew himself up! Dumbass. Yeah, the trites are, uh, pretty creepy. Uh, the trites and the, uh, ticks. Like, they got, like, half a human skull on them. It's like- The whole- the whole- the creature design for this game was really at the time and even today um, like today it's really excellent back then I'd almost say it's like second to none you know when I do a legitimate playthrough of this and not a uh, live stream I always get all the fucking passwords and I listen to all the emails it just wouldn't be particularly entertaining to watch me you know look at the PDA yes yeah, which password is which you know cuz I really do love all of this, all, all this part here, all, all this stuff here, because it, I love flavor test. Yeah, text. That's your 10 hour days there. Flavor text a lot. And like, it really does flavor the game quite a bit. I know there were complaints like, oh, it's like System Shock 2, but, you know, in 2003, I hadn't even heard of System Shock 2, so I didn't care. And having played a little bit of System Shock 2, I prefer this to System Shock 2. I know that's heretical, but what can I say? I also really quite like the uh, Doom 3 guy's armor. We were hit. And hello, Jason Blum. How much farther I can go. Here, take the transmission card. We can't stay here. Isn't safe. We better move. What? No. Of course, that's one of those drama things. It's like, okay, I could have totally shot that guy. You know, before he got... I could have totally shot that monster before, the, you know, our fellow marine buddy guy got eradicated. Now, one of the things I always love to do with these teleporting bastards is I like to shoot them as they teleport, so they literally teleport in dead. That was also something you could do in Duke Nukem as well, is you could shoot the uh, lizard troopers. They would literally just teleport dead. I don't know why I found that so satisfying back in the day. I still kind of find it satisfying today. Now, this of course is a bit degraded because this is the Xbox version, but look at this game though. It still looks great. I mean, I've, I've played a little bit of uh, PC Doom 3 recently just to test out that mod. And you know, for a game from 2003, it has aged remarkably well. I even said this back in 2009 when I did the review. And even now, I mean, 
this looks good. I mean, yeah, the screen resolution's a little low, but when you play it in 1080p, or I've actually got Doom 3 on PC to run in uh, 2K, and it looks pretty good in 2K. It just still looks damn good. Uh, yeah, that Anya scene from Wolfenstein 2, her dual wielding. You know, I gotta say, dual wielding anything is kind of silly, especially in real life. I dual wielded revolvers once, and I hit a grand total of nothing. Um, Anya dual wielding two rifles. Now, those are full power 308 rifles, I think. And I'm not, she does not have the upper body strength to do that. Not even BJ does, in all reality, unless he's like a fucking Terminator. In fact, uh, what's really kind of funny, that reminds me of a scene in the Terminator 2 continuation series by S.M. Sterling. Uh, in that particular series, the T-850's uh, human template actually is a character who's supposed to look like Schwarzenegger, and he actually remarks upon the fact that there's no way he, despite being muscled up like that, could actually dual-wield a shotgun and a rifle. I'm also quite fond of the uh, bullet enemies in this game. The z sex I mean, that was a really nice touch that this game had that uh, a lot of the other Dooms lack. That was something I was not particularly fond of with uh, Doom 2016. Uh, is that there just weren't many offensive options when it came to that. Doom 2016 has a number of issues that are more style-oriented, that are more me-oriented. Like, I liked it at first, and still do, but Doom 2016 does not hold a candle in this game. Usually, I'm much more of a fan of Wolfenstein in some instances compared to Doom just because the enemies shoot back. But this game here, you know, like, it has really the best of both worlds in terms of gameplay. Like, you do have the enemies that like to charge and attack you, and you do have enemies that you have to stand off with. And, like, this is still... I consider this one of my favorite games of all time, just because it's something I can come back to again and again, and I'm never really tired of it. There's just so many good things in this game that it really just... It's... It's an Apex game, as I said, back in 2009. Th this game really has stood the test of time for me. And unfortunately, one moment. In the middle of the street, yeah, what? And I have returned, quickly as one could hope. Uh, let's see here. EA released the first three Command & Conquer games at Freeware. And they can be played online, probably also through Game Ranger as well. Um, I'm not looking that much to Doom Eternal. I'm hoping it's good, but then again, I don't know. You gotta remember, like I said earlier in the stream, they're setting out to make a Doom game, and not just setting out to make a game. Therefore, I think it's gonna be a little too overproduced. And probably, it's not gonna be bad, but it's just not gonna be particularly amazing. We'll see, I could always be wrong. Okay, I'll admit I kind of jumped a little bit when they moved that skeleton. The sound design in this game is absolutely excellent as well. I mean, it actually is a legitimately creepy game. Uh, and I'm not even somebody who particularly gets scared by games. Uh, let's see. BG Duel... You see super shotguns or real guns? Borderlands wasn't bad. But, then again, I found Borderlands to be really boring. Uh, I don't particularly like it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I do have, I have played them all, of course. Yeah, I don't like it, that's why I played them all. But, yeah, yeah. I played them all and didn't find any of them particularly amazing. I will admit, though, that Borderlands, uh, okay, wait a minute. Am I actually saving here, though? It doesn't look like it. Let me double check here. No, I'm not! It's not saving. Oh, that's great. No, wait a minute. Hold on. Three thirty-seven p.m. Okay, I don't know why it's saving down here versus up there. That's weird. Maybe there's like a limited number of saves. I'm gonna save over that one just to see what happens. It says 2.23 p.m. 
Okay, I guess we've run into a save glitch. Well, that's not good. I hope... Well, now I kind of want to test it. I hate... Technical problems are always annoying. Now, theoretically, we should be able to reload this save, and it should be right there. But I bet it's not. I bet you it's not. Let's find out, shall we? And yes, Doom 2016 should have had some reloading. A retro future indeed. Yeah, the, it still thinks it's 2005 when it's really 2019. Yep. All right. Well, we're fucked in terms of in, in terms of this playthrough. I seem to remember this happening back in the day. Uh, so yeah, it won't save anymore. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. I want. Well, I guess I could try deleting some saves and see what happens. But that's not good. Yeah, well. Such is life, and such is technology. All right. Once this loads up, we will take a look. Because if we can't save, we can't really finish the game. Uh, yeah, we. This was the last save it saved, so I guess there's a limited number of saves when it's doing the uh, thing here. I guess. All right, let's delete that one and see what happens. Uh. Now well, there's another in pro. See, so yeah, it looks like it can save. But, let's just go ahead and delete some of these just in case. Hmm. That is bizarre that it would have that kind of a glitch on it. This is my own personal mystery of it. I once saw the gameplay as a young kid who was deeply fascinated by it. You haven't played it until recently. Well, it's quite good. Bip. At the year 2005. Oh, it's just a problem with InPro 3. Hey, save states... Uh, I if you save past in for okay well that's good that's just bizarre even in the retro future nothing works and silver wings i have to have my save states how do you expect me to, be to beat hard games i actually uh cut a line from the uh revenge of the sith video where we're saying how great save states are because they make hard games easy what can I say? Back in the day, back in the day, I never really finished that many games just because uh, I never could get past certain points and I'd end up giving up. But that being said, though, I did start a Donkey Kong playthrough uh, a couple weeks back, and I'm still playing through it. Uh, a legit playthrough. No save states, no nothing, just playing it naturally. And right now, I am stuck on the first level of the snow world. Have not been able to get off of it yet. But you do appreciate being able to save in that game so much more when you actually get to the Candy, uh, Candy Kong save state. Because, holy crap, is Donkey Kong hard if you can't save? If you can't save, you're fucked. Because you could die so easily in that game. Uh... Now, here's a pro tip for those who have not played Donkey Kong Country before. Uh, once you get past, like, World 1, and just doing that is somewhat hard, uh, remember that you can go back to the first level of World 1. And you want to do that a lot as you progress through the game. Because going back to level 1 of World 1 allows you to stock up on lives, and believe me, you need them bad. Uh... Oh, what was the name of that level? The Treetop tree top Village. I about never finished that goddamn level. Because it was... It, I went through... There was a time where I went through 25 lives trying to finish Treetop Village. And I still couldn't beat it. And I could get... And the game just gets harder from there. I remember that back in the day when it came to Donkey Kong, the furthest I ever got was the snow level. I never got past that. I'm hoping now in 2019 I can get past it legitimately. We'll just have to see. Uh, let's see. Once you get past it, it should work fine. Uh, give some love to the collabs of brother. Oh, yes, that person in Star Wars. Well, things happen as life goes on. Play the Donkey Kong. I still haven't played Donkey Kong 64 yet either, Silver Wings. I need to play that at some point. 
Uh, I guess we could discuss space balls at some point. Oh, Operation Flashpoint Dragon Rising. It's funny you should mention that. Of all the Operation Flashpoint Dragon, yeah, of all the Operation Flashpoint games, that's actually the only one I played. Uh, I played that on the PC, and I also own it on the Xbox as well. I played it on the PC uh, multiplayer, and it was actually a lot of fun. I got a lot of really fun gaming memories of that game, actually. Uh, because when I first started playing it, I never had actually played a game quite that realistic. And I didn't really understand some of the controls. Okay, skip. We already know he gets killed. Uh, quite that realistic. So I, of course, kept dying a lot. But there are two things in particular that I remember that are hilarious. One, I almost was finished with the first mission. And I wanted to tell the AI bot to land the chopper. Because we stole a chopper. And I basically gave him the wrong command to get out of the vehicle. He got out of the vehicle, all right, and uh, the chopper crashed and I died. Shit. And then one thing that didn't kill me was I was driving around in one of the little jeeps. Well, it's not really a jeep, but one of the little vehicles. Uh, and I hit a rock and did a complete, a complete 360 degree flip. It was just beautiful. Uh, that game, I need to play that again at some point, try to get that working uh, co-op. Because it really is a fun co-op game. If you haven't played it, I do recommend giving it a look. I think, I imagine the servers long sh are long since shut down. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, you can play that game uh, via LAN. And there's a lot of virtual LAN services. You know, you got Game Ranger and uh, a few others. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Treetrop Village was a Turok level, and it was pretty cool. I need to play that game again at some point as well. Uh, let's see. Got the chance to hear Ancient Cities PC theme. Eventually, I need to actually play Turok 1 all the way through on PC. Uh, yes, I have played Doom 3 Co-op. I wanted to get it working again, but I, I'm not really sure how to do that these days. I remember... Uh, a number of years ago getting it to work, but I don't remember how to do that. Uh, I do remember the open co-op mod was a lot of fun. Uh, it worked fairly well, but, you know, it's been so long. Oh, God damn it! Open up the PDA. Hey, uh, Kako Demon, don't attack me while I try to check my email. Look, don't text and fight. Just, just remember that. That's my fucking shotgun! I've always liked the Kako Demon in this game so much more than I did in uh, a lot of the other games. They just look so much creepier. Get that little exposed brain. Make a lot of creepy sounds. It's fucking awesome. Uh, yes, I do like heavy metal. Quite a bit, in fact. I actually listen to it virtually every day. Actually, not virtually every day. Literally every day. So, yeah. The Old Republic era Sith terrifying. And yes, the uh, Old Republic era Sith are pretty terrifying. They're more... Well, see, the Old Republic Sith are much more of a actual faction than just two guys running around trying to control the galaxy. Now, Palps did actually make some Techno Beasts, which basically just amounted to slightly more powerful Rancors. So, yeah. Okay, so I can't save it all. Well, that sucks. Uh, let's see. Turtle Hunter Remastered. I just, I just gotta play that at some point. X-Link Kai on Xbox. Uh, I've never actually used that. Uh, does that work with the 360 or does that only work on the original Xbox? Because I don't actually own an original Xbox. Just... I do have two 360s, so... There's that. Uh... Open email in Kako Demon. Oh, love. I got a mail in Sweet. Uh, you know, I never played a Doom game until Doom 2016. Okay, it works both on Xbox and the 360. Sweet. Uh, I'll take a look at that, because I do have two Xbox uh, 360s, but... Um, I wouldn't mind playing this co-op, just because this is how I uh, initially was introduced to Doom... Well, I wasn't introduced, I did... Oh, crap. And, of course, I have to go take a call.
I'm popular, it seems, both online and off. Oh, uh, let's see. Decided to go back. Okay, one moment. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's rain. You're in the chat, but I'm in the... Uh, join the uh, Discord chat when you get a chance. But yeah, that call was actually about just to order confirmation because... Because soon I shall do a first shots video of a Beretta 92. I picked me up a Beretta 92 just yesterday, and that was a... Call, uh, call confirming it. Um, it's a Beretta 92D model. Uh, purchased it off of Gunbroker. Now, Gunbroker is something that a number of YouTubers have mentioned throughout the years, and I haven't tried it until now, but I was looking specifically for a Beretta 92D. And uh, just what is a Beretta 92 Big D, ladies and gentlemen? Well, it's a Beretta 92, but it's double action only, meaning there, there is no single action trigger. And, uh, it's a fairly obscure Beretta model, but I wanted that one in particular because way back in the day, long before some of you were even born, I had three pistols to choose from as my first centerfire pistol. Uh, the Beretta 92D, the Smith & Wesson model 5946, and the CZ-75. The CZ-75 lost the, uh, pistol trials for the, uh, uh, General Lots Confederation simply because it was too expensive. The Beretta didn't win simply because the mag that the gun shop I was at that was selling it, uh, the mag only had 14 had a 14 shot capacity for some reason, not a 15. I picked this. I yeah. picked the uh, Smith. Oh, it's rain. How's it going? Yeah, the later mags for the Beretta are upgraded. You have as soon as they pass the U.S. military trials, they adopted the 15-rounder and later the 17-rounder. I actually got to get me a 17-rounder. The uh, one I got uh, comes with two 15-rounders. So that is cool. Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, I don't have a problem with a double-action trigger pull because I basically grew up with the 5946, which is a uh, double-action only as well. So. Well, you can change out the D spring and make the trigger just a little bit lighter on the DA models as well. Hmm. I may have to do just that if it's like really, really stiff. No, no, that's that's pretty easy. All you got to do is uh, order your main spring. You order from Reddit's website or a thousand and one gun shop sites. It'll just be marked as a lighter spring. You can buy it directly from Wolf if you want. You at the base of the grip. You'll see uh, your lanyard loop. You're gonna take a up, yeah, punch and push out the pin, which hold on to the lanyard loop when you do so. Otherwise, you're gonna see your lanyard lanyard loop flying. I think it's pretty loaded. Out. Well, yeah, that's where your mainspring goes. Okay. And basically, you just replace the spring, pop it back in, push the pin back in with your hands. So you're done. Oh, well, that's easy. Okay. Well, after I get it and check it out, I will have to order that. And since I actually have this thing called money, I could actually do that! Oh my uh, god! Even if you didn't, it's a cheap spring. It's like the most you pay for it, shipping and all, total 15 bucks. Oh. Uh, on average, more like eight. Okay. Well, that's easy. Oh crap, let's get out the chainsaw! And then I actually bring out the fists. You are doing good, guy. Chainsaw, well, that's nice. I'm gonna punch you to death. Yeah, who needs it? Go Kinshiro on their asses. Although, which would be more powerful, Kinshiro's fists or a chainsaw? Uh, technically Kinshiro's fists. The guys punch through buildings. Yeah, and there's also that one one scene on uh, YouTube where he literally punches a tank to death. Now, Kinshiro in the old old world of darkness. It's like he just punches a vampire to death. I'd like I, I would like to see that. Well, actually, that's one instance where Kinshiro might actually have a hard time. Hmm. Really? Um, he could do it. I mean, I'm not saying oh he can't punch a vampire to death. No, he could he could very well do it. The hard part is, let's say he's going up against a vampire with celerity or obfuscation as their main choice of power. That means they're a lot harder to see. 
in the second case and a lot harder to hit in the first. Okay, you might be kind of screwed with that, but then couldn't you use like some sort of kung fu power to get away, get through that? Uh, it really doesn't need to. I mean, it's Kenshiro. He only has to land one hit. I always like how he, like, he can punch somebody and they blow up. I just, that show was great. And that theme song, I still listen to that theme song to this day. Both the, this will make me look like a bloody weeb. Only because, well, I can't really say that I'm not, Cowboy Bebop poster, but anyway. I really like the uh, lyric version and the general, like, fighting theme that he has. It is fucking brilliant. Although, I didn't even know Fist of the North Star was even a thing until the internet. Uh, there was a YouTuber, what was his name? He used, like, little still pictures to, like, do videos. Oh, hmm. uh, shoot. Still Gaming, I think is what his name was. Uh, he would use, like, still pictures of himself, like, moving around, and uh, that guy did a video on Fist of the North Star, I think, almost a de over a decade ago, probably. And that's how I learned of its existence. You gotta love the YouTubes. Uh, let's yeah, see. Definitely helped out expose good anime and good shows to pretty much anyone and everyone. Exactly. And the Beretta 92D model is not the 40 SNW. Uh, the Beretta model for the 40, I think, is the 96, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's the 96. And the 96s are interesting. Uh, I can't say I have a lot of high praise for them, but they're not bad. I've I actually no, I've seen one in real life once. Uh, when I did my three gun thing a few months back, there was somebody there with one. He didn't do that bad with it, at least as far as I could tell. Uh, honestly, I would not want to see Gearbox make a Duke Nukem Five, uh, and I doubt Gearbox will ever do a bro another Brothers in Arms. I, I just feel like Brothers in Arms is long since dead, even though it's a really good game series from what I recall. Okay, will this save? And it appears that it did, maybe? I'm gonna assume it did. I'm gonna keep going. Uh, you like Five Finger Death Punch? Never have seen it. Uh, Fist of the North Star TV. Uh, you know, I've actually seen the Fist of the North Star TV series dubbed and with uh, subtitles as well. And... S -W oh, that's what you said in there. Okay. Smashing the Pieces is a good rock group. Never even heard of them. I don't really know too many modern day rock bands other than, other than uh, The Sword and they're not even modern day. So like, unless I can discover it randomly on YouTube, I've not heard of it. Actually, no, I, the other modern-ish band I know of is Sabaton, which I constantly listen to. It's because they're, uh, like, when I'm really, really tired in the morning, like, because I have to get up at uh, 4 in the morning every day, uh, listening to Sabaton can perk me up. It really can. Uh, they actually came out with a new song, uh not too long ago about the Bismarck. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's late. I've been mostly with High on Fire, um, Fireball Ministry, and, well, this is going to be very polarizing, but it's a local band, well, I'd say local, local Louisiana, Goat War. It, either you like them or you hate them. It's simple as. Never even heard of them. Call lift to oh I remember this level. This is somewhat confusing. Pantera and Doom 2016 soundtrack. The 2016 soundtrack is actually better than the game in some instances, or at the very least, a little more memorable. Okay, so did this save? I don't. It seems like the saving is still not working right. 
Okay, there it is. In Pro 1. It is, thankfully. Sort of. And Tech, uh, Glastikov USA, they're a very small business. Right now, they're cranking out the Saigas and the, you know, the their version of the Bison. But, well, actually, let me rephrase that. Their version of the Vityaz. The AKMs are coming. Right now, it would make no sense from business-wise to jump right into the AKM side, even though their name is Kalashnikov Concern USA, because they're, they would be immediately competing with Arsenal. And that, that's a losing battle unless you have a huge, huge backlog of different SKUs you can rely on. Yeah, I've heard a lot of things about Arsenal. They're very popular, at least in novels. I don't know if they're actually that amazing in real life, though. It's Bulgarian AKs rebranded. They're good. Well, they Pricey, worth the... but good. Yeah, it's not like they actually worth the over the thousand bucks they cost. Mm, I don't know if I'd go that far, some because I've had a lot of good AKs under that price tag. But if you want a guaranteed, reliable, well-built AKM, yeah, I would say so. Hmm. See, that's why I'm stuck with the AR, just because it's. But significantly less expensive, and this might seem heretical, but I'd almost say it's a better gun in many instances than the uh, AK would be. Uh, better is subjective. Um, I don't get me wrong. I've got a lot of love for the AK platform. I've got a lot of love for the AR platform, but they're just two separate communities, two different points of use that have a mild overlap. That's it. Um. If you're wanting the best quote-unquote AKM you can get in the U.S. market today, it's not an AKM. It's going to be the M plus M M10X. Eh, see, that's why it's just so much easier to do the AR. Besides, you've got all the uh, modular components and things of that nature. So, it just seems like a much better deal for me. Well, for your... For a shooter who's just looking for their first intermediate caliber rifle, yes, go AR first. Then decide if you want to go AKM. So I'm going to have to wait till I have an even better job than what I've got now to get an AK to be able to justify it. Just because it's like, yeah, there's about a billion, well, not a billion things, but many things that uh, I can use a little bit more than a rifle that I will seldom get to shoot. See, the thing is, I actually, due to, due to my schedule, I'm not even going to be able to get to the rifle range hardly at all now. Which sucks. Yeah, I can relate. I was like that when I was doing work with Toolhouse. Being on call kind of stops your weekend plans. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah, Half-Life. Okay, you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest right here. I may have been somewhat I may have been able to praise the first game, but I gotta say, when I say, when I think of Half-Life, it is not a game series I particularly like. The first game is pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I will never play it again, but it's pretty good. Uh, uh, there's there's one way I think you might want to play it again, but it's not vanilla. Hmm. It's brutal Half-Life when it's finished. I guess it's just I don't like Gordon Freeman. I don't like like, I, like I've said in other streams. I don't like anything about the universe or really anything. I just... It's not a game that I find particularly entertaining. And I've always kind of been that way about it. Like, I first... I didn't play Half-Life 1 until 2007, and even then I didn't finish it. The big problem with Half-Life is it feels a lot like Apple. It's like the Apple of the first-person shooter market. Okay? It really thinks it's better than it is. It's not as user-friendly as, say, you know, Doom here. And ultimately what you have is a functional first-person shooter that thinks it's the greatest thing there ever was. Well, that really... I'll, I'll go that it's like Apple in one more statement. It's not Tim Cook level of Apple, it's Steve Jobs Apple. And the fact that, yeah, it works, it's functional, it's, you know, it's slim, it's pretty, but it's not the company that makes that thinks, oh, we're the absolute best ever. No, no, it's the cult of Cupertino, or in this case, the cult of Valve, that thinks, oh, it's the best thing ever since sliced bread, blah, blah, blah. Okay, see, there you go, because that's the best way to describe it, you know, it's like, uh, 
that being know. said, brutal Half Life is actually it makes the shooting actually enjoyable. Hmm. Well, I will say that brutal Doom is what got me back into the original Doom, so I suppose it will be potentially worth a look since I own the game. After all, I might as well take a look at it. Oh God! Don't say that you're that you're 14 now. My God, that makes me really old. Uh, chaotic. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Apple first-person shooters. <laughs> it is. Uh, and Textor, even I know this because I saw that on the uh, on Interrange. Yeah, there's not going to be a 74 just because no one really no. cares about it. <laughs> I've got a Bulgarian AK-74, and that honestly would be the hardest rifle I've got to sell. It's just, it's nice. But that being said, if you really want something that feels like an AK-74, get an Arsenal in 5.56. It, ammo is a lot easier to find. The mags are the same price. 5.45 is okay, but the thing is, it's an inferior take on the 5.56 idea with no support here in the U.S. Exactly. It's just one of those things that back when you could get the cheap ammo, it was a viable thing, but now it's just not. Also, the uh, Berserk in this game is much harder core than the Berserk in uh, Doom 2016. It's like, holy crap! Also, uh, Doom guy, or Doom 3 guy, going nuts by picking up the uh, Super Hell steroids. That's basically what AK guys feel like when we talk bad about 545. <laughs> It's a good caliber, I swear. That's just it. I am an AK guy, and even I'll be the first to admit, yeah, it's an okay round, but <laughs> it's not that good. Uh, 7 and 6 versus, you know, Mark 262. Hands down, every day of the week, Mark 262 wins without even so much as an afterthought. Mm. Now, I'm actually considering, for my next long gun, just a Keltec Sub-2000. Is that something... Yeah, they're fun. Yeah, I want something that is ex cheap to shoot, uh, and if I get the one that I'm... Does Keltec make one that takes uh, bread and any two mags? I think so. Yes, Okay, do. and then I won't have to, like, get different mags for it. So, I'm looking... Well, you also might be able to find... Uh... A CX carbine for fairly cheap, and the used market, they seem to go for okay, and they're quite good as well. I've heard there's a lot of uh, extractor breakage issues, though. Mm, there can be, but there's also some issues with the Keltec. It's one of those that both companies support, you know, e both equally, and occasionally there are lemons, I'm not gonna lie, but both can be fun. Hmm. Well, also, the Caltex Sub-2000 has the ability to fold, which I think is pretty neat. Yeah. I don't know, I'll have to look at look into both. Like, if the prices are similar, I'll, it'll be one of those hard choices, like, which one? <sighs> well, you won't be making a bad choice either way. Yeah, because one's red, and Caltech is, well, decent. I know there's been some issues with some of their products. But that's mainly their subcompact uh, sub pistols. There we go. Well, yes and no. A lot of it is... Uh, a lot of it is FUDs and Fobbits complaining just to complain. I will admit they're, they're not perfect guns. It's, you will never get me to, to look at them and say, yeah, that that's, you know, that'll pass mill spec. No, it's a commercial gun. But that being said, I can think of a lot worse than what Killtech has done. I should think so. God damn it. Think so. I can think of a lot worse from big names than Keltec has done. Let's see. Half Life. Oh, Chaotic, you're working on a Half Life 2 retrospective. Well, don't. I probably shouldn't say that I think Half Life 2 is a terrible game. Because <laughs> it's a terrible game. I will be reviewing that and I'll get nothing but downvotes, but I think Half Life 2 is horrible. Okay. Uh, it is. Okay, let me put it this way. If 
Half-Life, the series, is Apple of first-person shooters. Then Half-Life 2 is the Apple Store of first-person shooters, okay? It's the Tim Cook Apple. The We're out of good ideas, we're out of original ideas, let's just mix it up and you know, see what we can do with it. Uh, see, that's still being too nice to it. I, I just want to say Apple Store, because, like, that existed even before Tim Cook became, like, the only Apple guy. At least I think it is, right? I think he is. Yeah, but here's the thing. The Apple Store back then, while it wasn't great, and I'll be the first to tell you, having worked on quite a few Apples, it was kind of mediocre, but it only got worse with Tim Cook. Uh, and yes, Vulcan, I also hate Halo 2. I seem to hate a lot of 2 games. Uh, Halo 2, in particular, is a game... So moving, all, moving on from Half-Life 2, because it's terrible. In fact, Half-Life 2 even makes me feel sick playing it. Uh, that boat level literally gives me motion sickness. So, there's that. But, ha uh, Halo 2, I think, is also pretty bad as well. Uh, the levels aren't nearly as good as Halo 1's. The story definitely isn't as good. Uh, the art design isn't as good either. The, the Mjolnir Mark VI, which is the only, you know, Mjolnir armor we see past Halo 2, or past Halo 1, I should say, uh, looks like crap. Uh, the green is too... He basically looks like he's walking around in a sprite can, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, that ending is terrible. I was thinking about Half uh, Halo 2 just today while I was busy working. Uh, and, you know, I was thinking about... It could have actually been a good game had they cut out anything with the Arbiter. If you cut out all of Thel Venom, you'd have a good game. Because you could actually end... You know, you can actually have an ending instead of, Sir, we're going to finish this fight. Uh, it's like, and then, and then it's cut to credits. If you didn't have all the Arbiter levels, the game would be better. Because who wanted to... Oh, we going? It's not the Arbiter levels that caused that. As, as, as much as I can see your point, it's actually not the Arbiter levels that caused that. It's the fact that halfway through development, Basically, Bungie had to push back the release date because Microsoft said, yeah, you know all that work? We want you to do it in a new engine. Oh, well, that sucks. A lot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and delete literally all of these saves. Okay, it says it will be lost forever. Not forever! Yes, forever. <laughs> but but uh no, uh, yeah. It, basically, if they hadn't have pushed it back six months to redo all the work they have had to push it back a year that uh, uh, thanks micro shaft okay there we go well the engine for Halo 2 was supposed to be a lot more advanced than it was that's why they had to they basically said okay this is incredib too, incredibly too much work Let's go ahead and revert back to the original prototype, which is basically just the uh, a slightly more advanced take on the Halo 1 engine. Uh, well, you know, that's the thing. There are so many better things that Halo 2 could have been. Uh, did you ever read Halo First Strike? Yes. Would that not have made for a much better game than Halo 2? Yes, it would, but... Unfortunately, that's not the world we live in. It's like saying Aliens Earth Hive. Yeah, I would love to have that be as, you know, even a multi-part movie. But we live in a world where we got Alien 3 instead. Uh, well, and that's the thing. Halo 2 just... I know everybody loves it for the multiplayer, but I don't really play games for their multiplayer just because there's so many good multiplayer games out there already. I mean, if you want, you know... To play a good deathmatch game, there's always a uh, Unreal Tournament. So, ah, well, such is life. Let's see. Uh, DW reduction. Oh, there's the. Well, the thing about the Covenant is, I kind of like them being an unknowable alien force. You know, it's like you don't really know. Oh crap! I just saw the lights flicker. <laughs> don't. Don't go out, power. Uh, Nega Scott, I recommend taking a look at SPV3. It's quite good. And hello, Corey. Your, your lights only flickered because I came in. Oh, definitely. 
Rage has the ability to summon demons now. No! God, it, 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 oh, the terrible dude. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. I can just finish the book where, uh, some demons <sighs> showed up. I finished the last book in the Monster Hunter series. Uh, it's still ongoing, which kind of pissed that's me off. That's, uh, that's Kane's theme from, uh, Poltergeist 2. Oh. No. It's like, God, it, 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 oh, damn, oh. I, have I can't remember the third. I don't think I've ever seen Poltergeist 2. No. I think it's a fantastic sequel. That's crap. Yeah, right. That's a good movie. Ugh. I was busy being Definitely raped in the corner. Movie. What were you saying, Rain? It was a good movie. I think I've only seen the first one. That's the movie series with the kid and, like, she sees the people in the TV. Caroline. Okay. Caroline! Caroline! Sorry. <laughs> Now, you watch the, the third one, they, they break the record of saying your name. Yeah. But what were you going to say? But then what's the movie with, like, their... Maybe it's the same movie, where, like, the daughter comes home and, like, there's graves shoot... Or there's coffins shooting out of the ground and crap like that. Poltergeist. Okay, so it is the same movie. I thought it was. You, sir, should rewatch Poltergeist. <laughs> I guess, because it's... I only watched it once uh, about 20 years ago. Toby Hoover directed it, though. There's... Spielberg produced it. Whole... Thing where people are saying that Spielberg ghost directed it, and because he was doing uh, E.T. at the time. Oh, ugh, E.T. That's neither here nor there. See, you know, I was the perfect age to see E.T., and I did not like it at all. Uh, let's see. If I, if I, I haven't it. seen it since I was a kid, and it's been on my list to rewatch to see how how it is. But getting to it. yeah, there's too many movies, too little time. <laughs> the, yeah, the Doom Three rifle looks more like an SMG, and it'd be nice if it actually had some sights. But hey, you it's know, basically a futuristic P90 with a display instead of sights. Hey, you don't need to aim. It's Doom. You just shoot it in the general direction, right? 80s hit fire Rambo technique. This is like a bad storm in your area, lot. Yes, there is. It's kind of sucked because it was raining at lunch, which meant I was stuck inside all day. It's like, Ugh, let me out for at least a few minutes. What is this sun that people keep talking about? Yeah. Uh, 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 Super Metroid. Super Metroid is a game that I wanted to like, but really just. Never found the super bombs. Never finished it. Ah. Yeah, if you're going into it, and you either didn't, you weren't of age at the time, or didn't have a guide. I could see it being a problem. Yeah, and I did. It's have some of my faves, but it's because I was of the age. There were no guides. It was everybody was talking about it, so you, you got your clues that way. But I didn't have any friends. Oh, you also were very, very young when it released. Well, actually, I played it uh, around 95, I think. But yeah, I was still like a kid. I was like six. Yeah. <laughs> hey, even I could be a kid at some point, as strange as that might sound. How did that happen? Uh, metal jacket. Full metal jacket? The classic... Might have been later than 95. Halo 5, God. Halo. Speaking of horror movies, uh, with possession as the theme, House. House is freaking awesome. Never even heard oh, of it. Oh, yeah. In House 2. Eh, less so for House 2. It's still good, but... Well, luckily, it's completely different from the first one. Both for their own things. Yeah. Not the house... So, wait a minute. It's the, pre it's the prequels that Doctor showed. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, I was no that to... would make for a strange setup. I was just about to make that joke. You know, I hate, I hate to admit it, but back when uh, when it was on, when I was on the cusp of just being online all the time, I actually used to watch those constant marathons of House that uh, the USA Network used to have. And like these days, I can't even stand the show. But somehow back then, I thought it was great. Don't ask me why. Uh, yes. Because Lori is an awesome actor. I guess. It's just, I don't know how I used to sit through TV shows like that. I don't know how I used to sit through TV shows. It's hard for me to sit down and actually watch a show all the way through these days. 
Oh, to be fair, TV has gotten a lot, a lot worse. Yeah, those are, there is, of course, you know, Warville. I would argue that TV's gotten better, but... Crap. Shut the door again. Some parts of TV have gotten better, such right. as Orville, but the vast majority, oof. Not, yeah, not the um, constant reality shows. <laughs> oh god, don't remind me of those. Let's see, uh, there's that one. Oh, it's flooding where you're at, Corey. And Neji, I will do an open mic thing uh, later in the month. And yes, Dark Souls 2 was the worst thing to happen to Dark Souls. Uh, Dark Souls 2 was particularly horrible. Uh, it wasn't broken in any way, but uh, they went the exact opposite way they should have gone when it came to increasing the difficulty. The idea of losing half your health every time you died, and then that yeah, was just... The level design was particularly bad. Basically, I don't think there's been a good Dark Souls game since Dark Souls 1. Uh, that ninja Dark Souls game that came out, uh, I think it's like Yeah, that's the one. I honestly don't like it that much. But then again, I've been able to play it a grand total of three times since I got it, so maybe I'm, maybe I'll be wrong, but... I feel like, uh, when it comes to the, to the Dark Souls-styled games, they make them a little too complicated than they should be. Uh, Sekiro has, like, way... The combat system is just a little too overcomplicated. I mean, holy crap, there's like different stances and things like... I remember when I just had to hit them with my axe and like circle around them, you know? And that was still tough because you had to master the movement. But this, it's like you have to have a book open just to know how to swing your sword. I prefer Demon Souls. I'm one of those weirdos. Oh, that is coming. Uh, once I get my new PS3, I will definitely actually hopefully be able to play that more than a grand total of three times for the Blu-ray laser breaks. Because I do have the game. In fact, I like showing things on stream because I have the webcam on. There's my copy that I've been able to play three times. Uh, got a PS3. What do you usually use a webcam for? Chun, chun, chun. I don't know. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Probably don't Late want night. <laughs> Late night with plots. No. This ain't Dark Side Phil. <laughs> God. <laughs> don't. Yeah, hopefully you don't review other people. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Oh, Your tits. Uh, three out of ten. Oh. Yep. Hey, you never know. Bloodborne. <laughs> Best start. Dark Souls 3 was pretty good. Alien Isolation 2, Super Metroid 3. Alien Isolation, that's coming next year. Uh, that's that's going to be like the big review of 2020. I'm thinking that's going to be sometime in September. I, I want to work up to it. Uh, but September of 2020, I will finally review that game everyone has wanted me to review, Alien Isolation. I can already tell you it's good now. If it goes on sale, buy it. It's Every time we say 2020, it makes me think of the show 2020. Is that even still on? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> I cannot imagine how much propaganda. I mean, um, perfect truth that it could be at this point. Well, we did get something good from 2020. We got John Stossel. That is true. I liked him even back when I was a kid. And I've always liked these uh, little sentry bots. I find them kind of cute, to be honest. They're like little demonic R2-D2s with machine guns. That R2D2 was already demonic. Eh, he didn't seem that demonic. Oh, yes! And sadly, Peter Mayhew has passed. He is no longer with us. And I'm sure. It's always kind of funny to. to oh, yeah, Peter Mayhew's dead. Who? You know, the, the guy. The man who had the most thankless job in the Star Wars movies outside of the props department. The man who played Chewbacca. And I think also R2, the guy in the R2D2 bucket is dead as well. Is he like seven foot? Oh. Mayhew? Yeah, he's a tall, lanky individual. Is that? Or huh. was. No! Demonic R2-D2, how could they have killed you? Actually, I hope I can even finish the level now that he's dead. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to go there. Is it hard to find coffins for really tall people? Oh, God. They had to be custom made. 
<laughs> hey, I was genuinely curious. How could you? I've got you? a friend who works in mortuary business. They, those have to be custom made. <laughs> I can make an awful joke and be like, oh, they'll just off the bottom and attach it to another coffin. <laughs> well, thankfully it's not quite that bad, but I, I can tell you some stories where it gets pretty bad. Uh, bad enough I heard the urban lead. Well, there's always those stories of them like hopping out the legs of people, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I don't want to confirm, but I can confirm. Uh, oh god! Well, at least you not you don't have to do it. You're not gonna be one that has to do the sawing. Um, god. Yeah. Split keyboard. Another basketball player died. I'll handle it. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh god. No, no disrespect to uh, Peter Mayhew. <laughs> All right, so here is the I'm choice. I'm pretty sure Peter Mayhew would laugh at that. I would think. All right, so here Plus, we. For all we know, he's getting cremated. <laughs> yeah. You hear me? Back off. Oh yeah. Okay. Here's something kind of cool about the voice for uh, Campbell here, or Swan. This is Swan. His his voice actor also did a lot of Star Wars work. Uh, he was the uh, mob boss in Kotor One. The guy you steal the Evan Hawk from. And you know what? If the Evan Hawk is good enough for him, canceling it is good enough for me. Now, when this game first came out, I immediately hit cancel. Because it was a good idea. It's like, well, okay, the demons will take over the ships, they'll teleport, and then go to Earth and kill everyone. So, cancel. Besides, I'm Doom Guy. I don't need any reinforcements. I am the reinforcements. Alright, let's see uh, Turok 3 over Turok 2. I'm going to review that in 2020 as well. Sadly, Turok 3 had no PC port, so we're never going to get a remake. Shit. Ah, well. I was just going to do the uh, N64 anyway. Well, let me rephrase that. The never port, I actually could be wrong. Because the guy who did their did the lion's share of coding for the remakes of Turok 1 and 2 also did the remake, well, you can't get it anywhere, you can't purchase it, for Power Slave, the PlayStation and Saturn version on PC, which had no source code on PC or Saturn. You had a completely different game on PC, so we might still get it, I don't know, it just seems kind of unlikely. Hmm, well, that kind of sucks. But, oh well, I will still be reviewing that in 2020 regardless. PC works. Scott Pilgrim versus the World the Game. Yeah, you can't get that either. Uh, That's in licensing hell. You know, that was not a movie I expected to like, but uh, I found it to be quite entertaining. Uh, what one? A movie? Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the World. <sighs> On that list. Someday I'll watch <laughs> yeah, I watched that around the same time as Zombieland, so I was kind of like in the mood for that. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shoot this imp. We're going to load up the next level, but then i got to go because I've got a shitload of crap to do. And I get to work on Saturday! Yeah! So, yeah. Kind of sucks. Got to work. Si i got to work almost 60 hours this week, but, you know... That did allow me to get my bread in 92 Big D. And yes, I'm going to call it that. So, I can't complain too much. Uh, let's see. Ability to play two characters with separate levels. Multiplayer. Yeah, we'll take a look at Turok 3 at some point. So, final thoughts, everyone. Kind of hoping we do get source ports for Power Slave and for No One Lives Forever from Night Dive. That would be cool. Rage? Assuming you're still here? Yo, what? Final, Final thoughts. thoughts. Oh. I have none. <laughs> oh. Well, my final thoughts is I cannot wait till next week when I can bring y'all a first shots video of the 92D. I've been wanting a bread of 92 since a long bloody time, and now I finally have one. And I'm quite looking forward to finally joining the Beretta Club. And so... I am General Lots, wishing you good um, Power Slave and good Red 92D, or whatever makes you happy. Groovy. Have a nice one. <laughs>